three individuals down the river. Where did he go? No, no, no. I know you don't. He punched me in the face. I don't know what the oh, f stop. His stomach is out. The guy is still walking up the river. He's the suspect? Yes. He's you know who it is? No, no, it's just some rando on the river. The Apple River is a natural river in Somerset, Wisconsin. It has become an incredibly popular hangout for residents and visitors in the summertime. You can go over to the River's Edge campground. The owner, Stephen Kaufman, or one of his employees will rent you a raft and some pre-cut string to tie your tubes together and you're off. It's approximately 77 and a half miles long and a trip down the river could take anywhere from two and a half to three and a half hours to complete. Okay, so the trip, the first half of the trip offers relaxed family fun and the last half features a wild rapids area for the adventurous or a walkway along the side of the river for the less adventurous. Sounds like an amazing way to spend the day, doesn't it? So how did this beautiful summer Saturday on the river turn into an absolute bloodbath? Have no fear, friends, because I have all or most of the answers. Hi, guys. Welcome or welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. It's so greatly appreciated. It truly, truly is. Before we get started, let me give you my usual disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. Please do not take what I say as fact. Please always do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Next, please like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't yet because it really helps me out and I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so Saturday, July 30th, 2022 was a sunny day in the 80s. It was the perfect day for tubing. And Somebody slump on the river, bro. How you slump? How you slump? How the hell you slump on the river? And this information would have traveled very fast that day because there was somewhere between one to two thousand people on the river. Three groups in particular, though, play the most important role in this story. First is the Isaac Schumann group, which consisted of Alex V. Jawan C, Owen P, Ryan N, Landon W, and Isaac Schumann. Then there's the Carlson Group, which consisted of AJ Martin, Madison Cohen, Quentin Carlson, Dante Carlson, Tony Carlson, Gabriella K, Janelle Duxbury, and Riley Madison. And finally, the Nikolai Mew Group, which consisted of Ariel, Gilma, Eric, Nikolai Mew, Sandy Mew, Rosie, Ernesto, Amanda, Tatiano, and Sergio. Okay, so let's talk Nikolai Mew. Nikolai was born in Romania and immigrated to the United States when he was 15 years old. This is not a stupid man, okay? Which is why I seem to be constantly asking myself why he didn't just walk away from this whole situation. He speaks five languages, Romanian, Russian, French, Latin, and English. He attended college in South Dakota and went on to become a mechanical engineer. In 2020, Nikolai had a heart attack and he required quadruple bypass surgery. According to his wife, Sandy, this may have contributed to one of the reasons that he pulled out the knife that day on the river. He's also had two hernia surgeries and back surgery. So, so let me let me elaborate on that. Basically, what his wife is saying is after all these health complications, he felt like a much weaker man than he was, you know, previously, I guess. So I think what she's trying to say is because of his declining health, he met, he felt more intimidated. It'll all make sense. Just keep that in mind. Okay. July 20th, 2022, Nikolai Mew has plans with his wife and some friends to go to the Apple River for the day. 
That morning, his friend calls him and asks him to bring a Swiss Army knife with him so that they can easily cut the ropes on the tubes. I mean, they also could have just bought the pre-cut rope, but I actually believe this story, though. I, I do. I don't believe for one second that the events that went down that day were even remotely Nikolai Mew's plans. Okay, that still doesn't change the fact that he did what he did, lied about it, and tried to flee the scene. Okay, so all three groups who have never met before say that it was a wonderful day. Towards the end of the day, a friend named Ariel from Nikolai's group realizes that he's lost his cell phone. This starts everything. Nikolai says that he grabs his snorkel gear and he sets off to check the river for the phone. This is when he, he crosses paths with Isaac Schumann's group. Five teens, ages 16 to 18, were all either drinking, smoking, or both. They see Mew walk by, looking a little off-putting, with snorkel gear in knee-high slash ankle-high water. So, they do what teenagers typically do, especially when they're in groups, and impaired, and they begin heckling him. They ask him what he's doing, and they claim that he responds, looking for little girls. I do believe that's what he said. I do. I don't believe that's the truth, but I believe that's what he said to them because I believe that he was just out there minding his business, looking for his friend's phone, and he these teens come and they start bothering him. They start heckling him. So he makes a sly, stupid, snotty comment to them, never thinking that it would escalate the way that it did. I honestly, honestly believe that. I think that he just thought they were a bunch of punk kids. So he wanted to just give them a punk answer. I do think that. But also, in, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but in his defense, in Nikolai Mew's defense, it was none of their business. He can be in the river. He can do whatever the hell he wants because nobody owns that river. The teen starts screaming at Mew and calling him a P.E.D.L. It's at this point they get the attention of the Carlson group and slowly more and more start walking over to help and or watch what's happening. Madison Cohen walks over first and she begins screaming in Nikolai's face to walk away and leave. Who is that? Who is the culture? Who is that? Who the hell is this? Go! It doesn't matter. He said he was looking for little girl. He said he was looking for little girl. You looking for little girl? Yeah. That's exactly what he said. We're gonna stop. At some point, Nikolai either slaps or punches Madison Cohn. In the face, I don't know what the f Nobody's clear what the hit looked like. All they know is that it happened and it struck her in the face. Next person to come over is Riley Madison. The two begin yelling at Nikolai on top of the five teens. And to be fair, he was surrounded. Who the hell is this? Oh, it doesn't matter. He said he was looking for little girl. He said he was looking for little girl. Yeah. Yeah. He's a They're yelling. Yeah. 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 On the flip side of this, there was more than enough open space for him to turn and walk away. And that would be part of his downfall. On the other hand, the teens and the Carlson group could have also walked away as well. You're talking about a big, 
huge river here. Everybody could have turned around and walked away. In truth, everybody that was there that day played a role. Not everybody that was there that day. I take that back. Everybody that was involved that day played a role in what happened and they are all at fault. Everybody. They all could have done something differently, but hindsight is twenty twenty, And I don't think anybody ever, ever, ever believed shit will go down like this. Okay. What's more alarming about the whole thing is that everybody changes their story. Madison Cohen was the first person from the Carlson group to walk over to the teens and you. Madison is one that has changed her story. Some friends say he punched her. Madison says he punched her. Others say he may have slapped her, not punched her. That's not to say that it's any better. He still put his hands on a female, but it does call into question if people's recollections are a little clouded due to the alcohol and the smoking consumptions. She also doesn't remember which side he punches her on, which is crazy because how do you not remember? During cross-examination, they ask her. So, he throws it with his left. He throws a hook with his left hand, right? Mm-hmm, yes. And I think you testified he hit you on the left side of your face. Yes. Okay. So, he hit you on this side of the face, right? Describe how that's humanly possible. I actually do get my lefts and rights mixed up a bit. Here's the other thing about the punch. She says that Nikolai punched her, yet she never tripped and fell in the water, never dropped her phone, and never dropped her alcohol. On top of this, she claimed that she'd taken pictures of the marks, but claims that she deleted them from her phone. Police informed her that they have the ability to do a forensic download of the phone. Madison agrees, and she hands over her phone to police. On the stand, the prosecution asked Investigator Mitchell if he found any deleted photos of Madison's injuries on her phone, to which he replied that he did not. The other female at the center of this story is Riley Madison. So Riley first spoke to news outlets while still in the hospital. I was punctured a little bit in my left lung, and then he kind of messed up my diaphragm. So I actually have about 30 staples going from my belly button up my stomach, um, where they had to go in to fix my diaphragm. And then they had to put in a chest tube. And then I did have a nose tube that kind of went all the way through. So I'll kind of give, like I said, this is my side of the story. This is nobody else's. Um, and to be honest, I was drinking that day. So things are blurry. I don't have a whole lot to say because I was the first victim. So I kind of just had paid attention to myself at the end of it. Um, but I will give from what I'm aware of what happened. Um, so we were tubing. I was probably with about 10 other people, um, a mix of girls and boys. And one of the boys, when we were tubing down the river had said that a group had looked uncomfortable. And I don't recall if it was, like a, I thought it was a group of girls that they had said was uncomfortable. Um, so my other friends and I just kind of hung out on the tube and a couple of the boys left to go kind of see this group and figure out what was going on. Um, and it was a little bit of time. I don't know how much time like in between, but finally I was like, all right, like, let's go see what's going on. Um, I asked a couple of my girlfriends to come with me. Um, we went over to the group and I don't know who had said something, but somebody had mentioned something about there being an older man there. And they thought he was kind of creepy, being a little weird, asking for like inappropriate things like for younger women and things like that. That's what I was, have heard. I don't know if that's exactly true. Um, but after that point, a friend of mine had kind of, I think went up to the older man or he came up to us. I don't know that exact point. Um, but she had told him, you need to leave. Like you need to go, you need to get away. And he kind of stood there for a second and then punched her in the face. Um, and after that, it was still a little bit blurry for me. I'm still trying to put those pieces together. Um, but what I remember is I'm like, oh my God, like, are you okay? Like, that was like not what I expected to happen to you. Um, and then I don't know if I said something to the older man. I don't know if I had hit him because I was upset 
before if somebody else had came and hit him. But I just remember him kind of turning towards me and we're both kind of staring at each other, probably a couple feet away from each other at most. Um, and he kind of just stared at me for a second and he pretty much like, not like lunged at me, but kind of just like leaned forward a little bit. And I thought he had punched me in the stomach. Uh, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I was telling my friends, I was like, I think he, like, he punched me really hard. Like this feels weird. And we both had looked down and I instantly was bleeding. Um, I obviously was stabbed like instantly. Um, I didn't really see a knife. I recall maybe something kind of poking out of his fingers, kind of like this, um, holding down my side, but I don't recall for sure if it was a blade or not. Um, my friend instantly, you know, saw that I was bleeding out and yelled to my other friends, you need to call 911. And to be honest, after that, no idea what happened. Um, I remember holding my wound, kind of walking around, see, like, just kind of like asking everybody, like, what do I do? Do I walk? Do I go find help? Do I lay down on a tube? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm dying. Like, what do I do? Everybody's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, I honestly didn't even know anybody else was stabbed. I was not paying attention to any of that. I was focused on myself because I was so scared and just so worked up and anxious. I honestly have no idea. Like I said, I was drinking. So like, I wasn't even focused on what was going on. I just remember them saying that a group had felt uncomfortable, kind of just hanging out for a second and then getting off my two, our two, ourselves and kind of going over there. But it's, it's really a lot blurrier than I thought it was going to be for me. I try to, every day I try to put some more pieces back together and I just, I can't. And did he go and like cold cock that girl from your memory or was she just lipping off to him? Like did you, all of a sudden you just see the punch get thrown. Pretty much, I just remember her saying, like, you need to go. Like, go, like, go. And he literally just, boom. At first, I thought he had slapped her because I was, like I said, I was just kind of not comprehensive. But no, he, he did have, um, end up punching her. So I'm pissed. I am very, 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 very angry because I have to almost, like, relive my life and relearn how to live. I have to, I mean, I have to have people sh help me shower, go to the bathroom. Um, it's, I, I choke on water sometimes, like, just like every little thing like that. It's just, it's insane that you, things can escalate so fast and that people just don't care about anybody in this world. And the, the world is just getting sadder and sadder. It's, it's a very, very scary place to live in. And it makes me want to stay home for the rest of my life. So I'm more, I'm more angry than I am sad. I mean, I have my moments, like I said, but I am very very angry. I mean, I'm very happy that I was able to kind of go over and help the situation, but I'm kind of angry at myself at the same time for even getting involved. By the time I got to the trial, Riley explains that at first she was just watching, incredibly confused about what was going on. And it wasn't until Madison called her over that she approached Nick and began screaming at him with Madison further admitting that she was unsure if he hit Madison or punched Madison, going on to say that she may have misspoken. What are we seeing in this um, That is, the bigger one is this wound. And how about in this one? Um, this is the one where they had to cut me open to get my stomach put back in. I told Q that I felt like I was dying because I just was losing, like I was losing so much blood and every time I'd walk, I just felt like I was getting weaker and weaker. Quinton Carlson takes the stand along with his sons, Dante and Tony Carlson. He explains that the family owns a bar and they are all incredibly skilled at being able to de-escalate fights because of it. That's probably true. Maybe not well enough though, because Tony and Dante both suffered stab wounds from Nikolai Mew. Riley Madison, I felt like I was dying. Sante Carlson was stabbed. Tony Carlson was stabbed. AJ Martin, who was part of the Carlson group, was also by Mew that day on the river. AJ claims that while Mew was on the ground, he walked over to him in an attempt to calm down the situation. He held Mew down in the water and tried to de-escalate the arguing. 
saying they planned to let Mew back up once the situation calms down. AJ would also get stabbed by Mew while trying to help. He may have gotten it worse, though, minus Isaac Schumann, of course, which we're going to get to. AJ says on the stand that at one point he was holding his insides in his hand. I don't know. Uh, it's... Uh. Look at me. AJ Martin. My stomach was open and my hands were in my hands. Last but definitely not least is 17-year-old Isaac Schumann. Isaac was on that river that day with his friends and is one of the reasons that this whole situation escalated. That is not me victim blaming, by the way. But it's just the truth. It's all on video. While Isaac never, ever, ever deserved what happened to him, nobody deserves that. If we're being honest, it was the teen boys that began heckling Mew. It was the teens that called this man a P-E-D-O and an R-worder. It was the teens that screamed loudly to draw the crowd. It was the teens that told the Carlson group fabricated story to get them angry and to get them to gang up on Mew with them. They taunted him, they bullied him, they shamed him, they belittled him, they ganged up on him, and they essentially jumped him. I have to be honest and tell you that I have some compassion for Mew, and I don't typically have compassion for perpetrators. This time I, I do, I do. I think that uh, if everybody would have just minded their own damn business, <laughs> None of this would have happened. And it, that just sucks. It sucks incredibly. But regardless, Isaac, 17-year-old Isaac lost his life and he did not deserve that. Nobody deserves that. Madison never deserved to be hit or slapped by a man. And DJ, Dante, Tony, and Riley didn't deserve to be stabbed. Isaac was just getting ready to start his senior year in high school. He was living in Stillwater, Michigan with his mom, stepdad, brother, and stepsister. He had also began a detailing business for cars and boats. The kid had ambitions, and I'm sure he would have made his parents really proud. He was described as a mother's dream. He loved school, and he loved learning. He played the cello and the piano, and he had a deep passion for sports. Now he's gone, and lives are changed forever for a stupid fucking reason. Isaac's mother says that justice would be her getting her son back, but we all know that's just not humanly possible, and it's absolutely tragic. His mother goes on to say that she hopes this monster suffers as much as I do every day until he goes to hell. The screams and the pain that you hear from the teens... When they realize that their friend is gone, is absolutely gut-wrenching. It's incredibly hard to watch. And I am confident that this situation is going to follow everyone for many years to come. One of the teens breaks down on the sand when he talks about the river turning red. It also very much seems like the teens thought that they were making like possibly a viral video by doing this never imagining that it would take the turn that it did. Nikolai Mew would end up being found guilty on multiple charges and was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the death of Isaac. Five years each for three counts of first degree recklessly endangering, endangering safety. Six years on a fourth count of the same and 270 days for one count of battery, all to be run concurrently. So when police first get there, they um, they are assessing this scene. Nikolai Mew is gone. He actually, at one point, he floats down the river past everything, past all the chaos that's going on. Loaded right by law enforcement and, and the injured parties and attempted to leave. Chain matches. Yep, yep. Sure. What's your name? Nick. Nick what? Nick Mew. Somebody, uh, I hear somebody got stabbed. Um, and I fit the description. Yes, you do. The first. Um, and 
he's trying to get, I guess he's trying to get out of there as quickly as possible, but there were photograph. Please end up getting their hands on a photograph of him. They run into him and they stop him. Where the fuck that go? I, I, I don't know. You know, but yeah. She got stabbed. Her right there. She got stabbed. Okay. And there's two down there yet too. Free down there? The guy is still walking up the river. He's the suspect? Yes, he's in the old still having a knife out. He was still standing up the river. 4502 dispatch. Just received information. Suspect still has a knife and heading up river. On foot. Do you know who it is? No, no, it's just some rando on the river. They're at. I need to grab my right ball. I'll be up there in a second. I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to get some witnesses. I, I started asking if there is cell phone footage. One thought they would One guy back there up. had it, yeah. Okay. Uh, where did he go? Do you got a video of the suspect? I don't got a video of the suspect. I got a video of, like, the aftermath. Okay. He goes down to the police station to be interviewed, and he lies. Lies, lies, lies. I just know that I took the knife from... From one of the kids, yes. I was in self-defense. I went into self-defense mode. We ate well, we had music, everything was so good, so good. See, it was, a, uh, it was self-defense. Self-defense, there were a lot of people I, that came on to me. I didn't even, I didn't, don't even know what happened. I just know that they, they attacked me and I, had, I was in self-defense. I went into self-defense mode, all I can say. It was a, uh, it was self-defense. Self-defense, there were a lot of people on, on, that came on to me. And one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it and I poked him with, with his own hand. And then I, I took it from his hand and then I, I went and swung like this. So I don't know who I hit, I just know, I just know that I took the knife from, from one of the kids. You spoke with Brandy Hart, were you truthful to her about the knife? No. I lied about the knife. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. Mm -hmm. You have the right to consult an attorney before making any statement or answering any question, and you may have him or her present with you during questioning. What? I was so fearful. Nice. They, they pointed the knife at me. They pointed the knife at me. Both boys pointed the knife at me. And one had it in his hand, so I took his hand and I bent it, and I poked him with, with his own hand. And then I, I took it from his hand, and then I, I went and swung like this. So I don't know who I hit. I just know, I just know that I took the knife from, from one of the kids. Okay. Goggles are lost. We took them, we grabbed them off my face, and threw them in the water. We found the goggles. Oh, good. Thank you. Did you have a knife? No, no absolutely. Okay. So what happened? Can you tell me what happened? Yes. Um, four people went to the hospital with injuries. Oh my God. And uh, one person died. Oh no. I don't know any of their names and I don't know any genders. So I, I don't Was know. that because they fought each other or is that I the. I don't know. I don't know what their injuries are. Yes, he's lying. Yes, he's lying to police in his interview up until the point where he finds out that there's a video because at first he had no idea that he was being videotaped. I guess everything was going happening so fast, maybe. There was so much going on. He never realized that he was being videotaped. If you guys are still here, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you so, so, so very much. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't yet and you feel so inclined to because it really helps me out and I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, stay safe out there.